Well, the number one machine there of Molyneux is all lined up and ready to go. Yeah, he was uh, really disappointed after his second position. He came back from, well, he just fought his way back on time and finished second in the first sidecar TT earlier this week. You saw that uh, outfit slew sideways as he puts the power down about 140 brake horsepower. There is the number two machine of John Holden and Andrew Winkle. Yep, they're away. Disappointment for them in the first race. Uh, they were in a good, strong uh, podium position and went out. That's Simon Neary and Paul Napton in the Nick Crow outfit number three, and they are tearing off with their Honda engine outfit. Yep, fourth in the first sidecar race, the Leeds pairing. Tim Reeves and Dipa Shauhan, and they're away on the yellow outfit. And again, you can see the sidecar passenger right behind the driver. Keep that airflow as good as you possibly can. Number five, Klaus Klaffenbach, Dan Sale, winners, of course, on the Manx gas machine from the first race. Yep, you see when uh, that tyre spins, it pushes the sidecars to the left there, pushes sideways. On board as they go down to the traffic lights at the top of Bray Hill using the right-hand side, and then they'll come across to the left, trying to keep it in the middle of the road as best you can. The outfit goes light over the top there, and then they plunge it down this hill, still accelerating all the way. But there's Molyneux and Patrick Ferrance, 14 wins for this man. Through, he goes through Union Mills. Yep, out, up towards Glenvine, and then on to one of the fastest parts of this track at Crosby. His homemade chassis, the DMR Kawasaki, the man puts this outfit all together himself, he knows it implicitly, and he'll be hoping it all keeps together nicely for him. That was Tim Reeves going through. We've got number four, Tim Reeves, same place, through Union Mills. We're already hearing that Reeves and Molyneux are both out with mechanical issues. Here is the Manx gas machine of Klaus Klaffenbach. Yeah, winner of the first sidecar race, now holding third in this race, behind Holden and Winkle and Simon Neary and Paul Napton. And the bumps here leading up towards Ramsey. This is Schoolhouse Corner coming up in a minute. The uh, sidecar passion will be hanging well out to the left, right over the top of the curve there on the left. Very impressive stuff. Yeah, what you've got to remember is there's lots more corners for these sidecars because they can't straight line between the curbs. They've got to make the corners. Yeah, and making sure, of course, you don't put the passenger in the hedge. Yep, and this is... Uh... Ooh, let's have a look. Yeah, that is near it in front of Holden. Oh, no, disaster there for the number three machine. The uh, Nick Crow racing bike is out, hand was up. They had some problems in the first race. They overfilled it with oil in the first race. And that leaves this pairing the Clitheroe pairing of John Holden and Andrew Wilk Winkle now leading this race. On the re relentless Suzuki, Suzuki's will be looking for a win, but here is the man that's uh, chasing after them. Klaus Klaffenbach heads down the mountain section, pit boards come out, there they go, and uh, Philip Neal from Suzuki's will be looking at this 50th anniversary, of course, but at the end of that lap, it is Holden leads Klaffenbach by 8.98. Harrison, Brian, Lambert and Wallace, top six. Klaus Klaffenbach and Dan Sale tearing along Solby Strait as he is virtually nine seconds back. The heat haze and everything else bouncing along, but this is the fastest part of the circuit. Yep, round the kink in the middle of the straight and on towards Silver Bridge and then Ginger Hall. Next stop, Ramsey. But this is the man at the moment that is really very much on a charge. Yep, the clear old man, John Holden, his passenger, Andrew Winkle. And when Winkle looked down there, I think he was looking at the, the back tyre. I don't know whether something's wrong there. No, but he lays in uh, the bottom of the outfit here, and here is the man that's in third place. That's number six, Conrad Harrison and Kerry Williams on the Shelbourne Honda. Yep, they're from Bradford, good Yorkshire boys. You see the white rose emblazoned on the front of that fairing. From the helicopter, we look down on John Holden and Andrew Winkle. They're a sidecar passenger. You just see how much these guys have to really work. Look at him hanging out there. There's bums nearly on the ground, right on the left-hand side, moving back over when you're coming out of a corner to get the traction. And when you're not, you're just tucked in, trying to keep out of the air. Yeah, that's what people don't realise. You know, you, you haven't, as a passenger, you've just got to hold the sidecar wheel on the floor. You've got to get your backside over, all the way over the drive wheel to get it, get some traction. Yeah, it's all about balance, but on board with Klaffenbach and Dan Sale, the LCR machine climbs the mountain. 
Yeah, and this bike's been strong all week up this section. These bikes, they're carrying about 400 kilos. That's a lot. On the line again for the start of the final lap. Of course, no fuel stops. Three lap race this will be. And this is, uh, this is Klaffenbach. Down the start and finish straight again. Like you said, no fuel stops. Straight through on a flyer. 37 and three quarter miles around the course and there in these perfect conditions you can see that gap is still very much the same there. Ten seconds is a lot for Klaffenbach to do on this final lap. Well word is that John Holden and Andrew Winkle have a six second lead now at Ramsey so they've got the climb up over the mountain and this is of course where it all sorts of begins at the gooseneck so six second advantage they have over Klaffenbach and Dan Sale. Yeah that should be enough I reckon Steve. Although this outfit up the mountain doesn't seem to pull something about gearing or a little bit of mid-range at this bike, the number five Honda outfit of Klaus Klaffenbach seems to go up the mountain a little bit better. It's not much fun seeing minus six as you, six as you climb the mountain, but he's got a lot of work to do. And there is, look at the heat haze coming out of the exhaust system. And here it is, here are the guys that are chasing. And as they go through the bungalow, we will get an idea of what's going. They've gone through, actually, word is now it's down to two seconds. So up towards the finishing line, and there is John Holder and Andrew Winkle take the chequered flag. Now they've got that agonising weight because this is the outfit that was in second. Two seconds back, has any more time been made up? We're going to find out in a minute. Klaffenbock there, the clock is ticking, and he's got to be less than 59-53 to take his second win of the week. And we wait for it to stop, he and he's it. done it. He has done it. Just amazing stuff. Two wins in the week. He's never won a TT before. I couldn't believe it, and, and, and not even dreamed before I came over two weeks ago. And now we have to double. Coming on that last lap, you're getting the boards, we were chipping away at the time. He just started riding the wheels of it. And just to finish it that close is unbelievable, isn't it? Then I saw minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, and then I saw minus 8, minus 6, and then, oh, it's going. So keep on holding and go a little bit faster. But that is mega.